Nine years ago, I woke up in the middle of the night with a panic attack and thereafter was diagnosed with anxiety fueled depression. My understanding of mental health was very little. I had never really encountered anybody with a significant mental ill health condition. I remember waking up at midnight. My heart was beating at a rate that it's never beaten before. I was sweating profusely and I thought it was a heart attack. So I was petrified that I was about to die. I was aware of the stigma around anxiety and depression and so therefore what was this gonna mean? I mean was I now a failure? In some ways you're kind of fearful of talking about your illness but during some of those really dark moments where I had very clear suicidal thoughts during my illness it was knowing that people loved me that kept me alive. Jeff is now campaigning and advising to improve mental health awareness and support in the workplace. I think it is in the financial interest of companies to begin to enhance the well-being of their people. I think that there is also a moral case that this is just the right thing to be doing. Well, Jeff is here with us now. And Jeff, we heard in that film there. So you, you had your first kind of anxiety attack back in 2008. So what, what do you do these days to keep yourself well and to, and to try and prevent that from happening again? Yeah, Matt, I, I, I don't know. I think there are a couple of things. Um, the first is just in terms of my physical health. I've, mm -hmm. I've learned to recover more. You know, I've learned to sort of take moments out during the course of the day mm -hmm. and just recover. Which is a simple um, thing, but very hard to remember to do. Yeah, but, I, but it, you know, it's, some, it's, it's trying to be disciplined about that and sort of make it a priority to mm. kind of say, you know, let me just, even if I go to the coffee machine, let me just go to the coffee machine, not talk to anybody else, and just have a bit of recovery time for me. So at a physical level, that's something that I've really tried to build in. Okay. Maybe an extra two minutes in the shower of uh -huh. the morning, just feeling the water falling onto my back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being in the moment, I suppose. Isn't yeah. It? People often say that exercise really does help as well. I mean, is that something that's important for you? Yeah, look, I mean, I always used to do a lot of exercise. Did you? In some yeah. ways, I think I did too much exercise and I didn't recover enough. Oh, really? Um, so I'm doing exercise, I'm doing nutrition, I'm sleeping well, yeah. but I'm not recovering. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the other thing is, is just, is learning to do things that just make me happy. Because sometimes you can't really pour from an empty glass. You know, when the glass is empty, you can't pour from it. And we, we, we spend most of our life making everybody else happy. Mm. And so on a, on a Saturday morning, you know, jumping on my bicycle and going for a ride with my mates, I mean, that is my happy time. And it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a really important part of my life. Mm -hmm. So much stress in the workplace, Jeff. You know, you're campaigning to try and make a big difference here. What tangible things do you want to see in the workplace, you know, within offices or shops and what have you, what would you like to see happen? Well, I think the first thing that I'd like to see is, is I'd like to see more leaders from the workplace just sharing their stories, right? telling their stories and normalising this. You know, I'm indebted to celebrities and politicians and sports people and the wonderful Heads Together campaign and the Royals, but I'd love to see some people from the workplace, influential senior people telling their stories. Right. Because that kind of just helps to normalize it. I think the second thing that I'd love to see is, you know, we've spent millions investing in health and safety. Well, most of the training's gone into safety. And I think we should invest in health. In the health mm. side of things, yeah. Particularly in the mental health area and, and upskilling people in terms of their mental health. Mm -hmm. I think organizations can also look to how do they change the narrative around mental health? You know, the narrative amount around mental health is, it's so negative today. You know, when you hear the word mental health, people immediately go to depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, bipolar. You know, when you hear the word physical health, people don't immediately go to diabetes and glandular fever and cancer. So how do we shift the narrative? How do we make it aspirational and inspirational? to look after your mental health. So I think organizations could be, the way they communicate and the way they talk about mental health could be in a much more positive way, which is about enhancing the productivity of people. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I think, I think that, um, you know, walking into a Nike store, 
When I walk into a Nike store, I see chiseled whippets all over the walls. <laughs> and I feel, I feel inspired to buy a pair of running shoes. Yeah. yeah. What are the images I see around mental health? Yeah. Black and white photographs, yeah. people with their hands and their head. There's nothing inspirational no. and aspirational. Yeah, yeah, so it's just changing the perspective, Don, which we were, we were just talking about there. Absolutely, it's just a yeah. different view of it and how actually, when you do look at it from that different angle, mm. things can be very different. Yeah. Mm. Well, well, at least you're doing your bit, yeah, Jeff. Yeah. You're doing and what you can. Uh, if you're affected by any of the issues we've spoken about, then please do go to the Action Line website where you'll find details of helplines. And tomorrow, by the way, Frank Bruno will be with us here talking about his personal battle with bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm.